Welcome, Star Wars fans, to episode 140 of Tatooine Sons. It's almost impossible to put into words what we all experienced last Friday while watching chapter 16 of The Mandalorian. Wow. Yeah, that, that was oh. freaking weird. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. Oh, that's all we're going to talk about? We're just going to talk about Luke Skywalker. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. else. That's yeah. the only thing that's really good. What, do you, yeah. what about you? Baby Yoda's gone. I know. Grogu, what are you going to do about it? So. Um, the rescue answered some questions, but created many more. So many questions. We'll do our best to try to answer these questions, and then Sam, I guess, will be given 60 seconds to scream about the Book of Boba Fett. We, we freaking got a show, y'all! Are you going to be okay? No. Have you ever, like, have you recovered yet? Nope. All right. I'm still working on it. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. It's time for Tatooine Sons. It's true. It's true. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? (laughs) It's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. (laughs) Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream, that porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys recorded an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was lit. Welcome, Star Wars fans. This is Tatooine Sons, your weekly look into all things Star Wars from the unique perspective of a father sharing his love for the amazing space fantasy saga with his two sons. I am BB Nate, and I'm joined first by my brother, Samuel the Hutt. <laughs> uh, Chucha Star Wars fans, thanks for tuning in. And if you're not a Star Wars fan, and get over it. We're getting a Boba Fett show. You're going to watch it. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. You're, that's all you care about. Yes. The, the post credit scene is the only thing you want to talk about today. Yep. Okay. All right. <laughs> and of course, you can't have Star Wars without bizarre father figures. So on that note, here's my dad's bow tie Jedi guy. But we're not just just me. We got a guest again. Yeah. yeah. Hey, hey guys, I'm back. Hi, yeah. Savannah. Well, you want the bad news or the really bad news? She's glutton for punishment. <laughs> she came back for a second episode. I wasn't sure if we were going to let her after the yeah, Turbis Grogu thing, Baby Yoda thing. Sammy no. insisted. Yeah. Oh, Sammy insisted. Well, you know, he he thinks she's pretty special. So she is pretty Aww. special. So what'd you think about well just real quick, what'd you think about the finale of Mandalorian? Well, I mean we watched it twice in a row. Like so, back to back? Yeah, literally we turned it off, turned it back on. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm kinda wanting to see it again. So yeah. All right. Well, you know, that's the beauty of Disney Plus. You you can go watch right? it all over again. So, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. This is so cool. We're gonna. It's just you know. This is Monday. I by well by the time you guys listen to it, it's Monday, and uh, you know Friday we'll have Christmas, and then um, and then a new year starting. We're doomed. Hmm. And uh, we've got a brand new fourth season. This is madness. Can you believe that we're going to have a fourth season of no. this show? Um, that's because we don't have to have anybody telling us whether or not it's renewed. We just make a decision. So, um, yeah, anyway, um, we're going to have a fourth season and we're going to start that season with Dan Z from Coffee with Kenobi. You okay with the water bottle over there, BB Nate? Yeah, I heard that clicking all over. He's opening that water bottle. You good? Is that high quality H2O? High quality H2O. Yeah. Thank you, Waterboy. So great movie. That's a yeah. good movie. Dan Z and I, uh, is going to join us. Um, we're going to talk a little bit of High Republic hot takes, uh, to start out the year. And then, uh, it looks like we're going to have Pete Fletzer from around the galaxy. And I've reached out to some others that we're going to have on the show. And, uh, and that's the whole goal of this new season. Um, you know, we, it's one thing to hear us give our hot takes, but we want to hear what some of the other most amazing people in Star Wars, yeah. um, think about these hot takes. And that's one of the reasons we've got Savannah, uh, on the show this last yeah. week. She's one of the most amazing people, uh, in our Star Wars world. Wow, so. I didn't even pay you to say that. I know. Well, you know, you're going to do a review, so I got to be uh, oh, yeah. I got to be really careful um that we do <laughs> things right. So yeah, that'll be starting up in January. But we've got uh that's, you know, next year. We've got a lot more to talk about um with uh this I don't know. This Mando thing. You think we should talk about Epic. Mando? Season two finale, uh, for the Mandalorian. Uh, last episode, we gave lots of predictions about what we believed could happen in the season two finale. Um, and most of those we got 
terribly wrong. I didn't get to see Baby Yoda with his Beskar armor. I know. And, and I, you may never see it. Uh, but there was actually a couple. Savannah got one right. And then I, I got my prediction sure to go wrong. That wasn't really sure to go wrong. You kind of were expecting it. No, I wasn't. Yes, we'll were. talk about it. it. It went right. Um, we've got a lot more of that uh, to talk about. And that's all up next on Hot Takes. This is where the fun begins. Well, you want the bad news or the really bad news? Impressive. Every word in that sense was wrong. All right. Reactions. I, you know, we'll talk about details on this. I'm going to start with ladies first. What was your general over, overwhelm, uh, overarching reaction to the season two finale of The Mandalorian, Miss Savvy? Oh, as soon as those credits started to roll, I'm pretty sure my mouth was hanging open for like five minutes. Like it took you that long? My yes. mouth was that was like the last fifteen minutes uh, of the entire episode. Okay, yes, so. that's true too. That's true too. I mean, spoiler. As soon as as soon as I saw that Tie Fighter come in, oh, did you know? The oh X-Men? yes, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, like as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh crap, it's going down. <laughs> it's it's going down. All right, BB Nate, what did you think? What was your reaction? Uh, it was okay. It was okay? <laughs> That's kind of his reaction to just about everything. This is how he reacted. This is funny. If you're just tuning into this show and you uh, you maybe haven't listened to it for a long time, Savannah may not have even heard this story yet. So uh, August, September or so of 2019, I finally get this message on Twitter um, from one of our Twitter followers and she's like, have you checked out StarWars.com? And I'm like, what? She's like, he's canon. He's canon. Turbis is canon. She's freaking out on this message. It's like all caps, you know, exclamation points. And so I go to Turbis.com. I'm at Turbis. work. <laughs> I mean, I go to StarWars.com. Excuse me. I go to StarWars.com and for like 10 minutes, I'm just standing there. I'm at work. I'm training a team of new salespeople and I'm standing there and I can't talk because I'm looking at it on StarWars.com that Turbis is officially canon uh, with it. And then I call Nathan and he's babysitting some dogs or dog sitting. I guess that's what they call it, right? Um, mm-hmm. Dog sitting and I explained it to him later and I'm like what do you think and he's like that's cool <laughs> I'm like what so that's kind of the, yeah, yeah. that's your reaction I, I mean I don't get very up and down no I, I mean it was a great episode very well done it was it got me into feels when it needed to and I was also cheering when I needed to it was a great episode I kind of wish the Jedi was as okay. Rough, we'll talk about that. But, That's an interesting take that yeah. you that you mentioned on that. What about you, Samuel the Hut? I mean, the episode was was you know it was fine. It did what it needed to do. But can we talk about the post credit scene? No, I promise. Sometime we'll talk about the post credit scene. Right, but right now, talk right. about the main episode. What did you think about that? I thought it was a great finale. I think it did everything that a finale should have. It topped the first uh, season's finale. Um, I loved it. I'm so, so happy with where they So for it. both of you, all three of you actually, did you prefer the season one finale or the season oh, two finale? Oh, that's easy. Go ahead, Savannah's okay. got her hand in the okay, air. Okay, yeah, I actually thought about this. I was thinking that this finale honestly had a lot more closure to it than the first one, which yeah. I, I appreciate, you know, and like my mom, the first season, she was like freaking out because she just wanted to make sure that everything was okay. She hates cliffhangers. Of any kind. And this one, of course, there's questions that we can be asking, but at least we kind of have some closure on what's I been going know. on. I don't There's a big question that I'm... And, and we saw her yesterday. We saw her today at church. And both times, it's like all she wanted to talk to me about was... What happened to Baby Grogu? Yeah, where, what is where is Will it? I ever see Baby uh, Baby Grogu? I, I'm going to do that. That's a, the, the right way That's for me to That's actually a pretty good compromise. Baby Grogu? Well, then just, still works. just go to I mean, Baby it's, Groda. It's I, accurate. You know, here's, here's where I go with it. Yeah. It's like, I mean, it, he is a baby. In my head, I'm still thinking Baby Groot. Uh, with some stuff, so. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay, I thought it was unbelievable. I mean, when I sat here last week and we recorded our predictions episode and I gave my prediction sure to go wrong that Lou Skywalker would come up and take Baby Yoda to train him as his Padawan, I BB Nate, I know you're thinking that I expected this to happen. I had heard it as what if this ever happened and I a second that I heard what if this could happen, I thought that would be amazing. I never really believed that that would happen in this episode. For lots of different reasons, and but you were wanting it. I wanted you were like it to happen, gunning for it. And a then lot. I just want to say this. I'm going to say this in a pa- very passive aggressive, but also uh, I'm not going to like uh, expose any names so that the innocent will not or the guilty will not be uh, um, hunted down. Hunted down. But please. When these types of events happen, don't direct message somebody to where it shows up on their iPhone as an as a 
message that they see when they wake up that morning and say, can you believe Luke Skywalker is back? That was horrible to wake up to. So I was guide, guarding everybody from any spoilers the rest of the morning. But when they, I, I, when the X-Wing showed up, it was pretty clear. Oh, yeah. So. As soon as I saw the X-Wing, I'm like, yep, it's happening. Yeah. So it's awesome. There's a lot of things that happened in this episode. Uh, let's go to – let's we'll start with you, Samuel. I know that some of the questions on here are, are listed with different responses in different orders. But I want to start with you on this one. Yeah. Um, Boba Fett. Uh, we had lots of him at the beginning and then he disappeared for the rest of the show until this like weird after credits thing that they, you know, is this Marvel now? What is this? So it was oh, well, Peyton amazing. Reed. Okay. It was Peyton Reed. He's a Marvel director. And John Favreau. Yeah. And John Favreau, they threw in a uh, after credits scene like it's the MCU. But, uh, you know, for years because of Clone Wars, Samuel, uh, we believed that he wasn't a Mandalorian because mm-hmm. of some things that I can't remember the Mandalorian official in the Clone Wars that said it, but one of them said it. And he was not exactly a trustworthy source, but everybody assumed that he was t- telling the truth. And then in chapter 14, we got the impression based on what he said about Jango Fett and all of this, that he was a Mandalorian. And then in this episode, he says he's not. He doesn't. Well, Bo-Katan tells him he's not a Mandalorian. He's like, I never said I was a Mandalorian. So how are you? Ha- what, what are you thinking about all that Mandalorian thing? You know, I. <laughs> He he's a foundling, right? I think we know that. But he's that, the, here's the it th- says okay. it on his though that chain code or whatever. Like you translate it, it says foundling. So his dad was a foundling, um, and then he was born. I think that's where the confusion comes from, at least on Bo Katan's part. I think she doesn't think it's official because technically he it's not his dad or whatever. It's just him again, basically. It's a clone, right? Mm-hmm. So I think he, she gets that disconnect because it's like it wasn't passed down. It's not official, right? And his dad was already a foundling in the first place, so it's not, um, like also, it's not as official in that regard as well. So, I and think that's and, and I think that it, he didn't really grow up in the Mandalorian culture because he right. leaves in, in Attack of the Clones at like what 10, 11, 12 years old or something like that. Right. So. I think he was just kind of playing like playing it tough. Like yeah, I, I never said I was a Mandalorian or whatever. Like he's just yeah. kind of like. I don't need to answer to these people. Like I'm, my, I'm doing my own thing here. Okay, Savi, do you think that Boba Fett is a Mandalorian, or does it even matter? Oh, it matters. Uh, I think back in season one, whenever I first started really spinning my little gears in my head about Mandalorians and all of these things, because I really didn't have any background on it other than just the series, and so I started wondering about like Boba and Jango and all that stuff, and. When I started realizing they had the same armor, I remember asking my dad, I was like, hey, so do you think that they were Mandalorians? And I remember him looking at me being like, whoa, that's that's possible, but I honestly don't know. And so I've been wondering for a while. So it's not that I don't care, but I, I still, I mean, I just need someone you to tell me. Feel like it's all I want that someone answer. to just tell me a solid answer so I can just either rely, because you know, we have the other, like the whole other set of Mandalorians, they don't really care about the whole helmet thing. So just because he takes his helmet off every once in a while or whatever, he's not super religious about it, doesn't mean he's not a Mandalorian, but maybe he is, maybe he isn't. Yeah, BB Nate, they they started last, uh, or in this season specifically, we learned that there's different factions within uh, Mandalorian yeah. gr- culture. Uh, the armor in the season one kind of talks about this as a creed. Um, these foundlings in the Children of the Watch and that they're adopted into Mandalorian culture and they have their own religious beliefs, which we talked about on our last episode. Bo-Katan seems to have a different position on them than that. Uh, do you think that we have yet to settle what it means to be a Mandalorian and that's still going to happen in the future of the show. I think that that is, I don't, I, yeah, I don't think we've settled it yet. I, I, we have no idea we're as clueless now as we were in the beginning of season one. We don't know how Mandalorians act very well because now we know that there's two different kinds and we don't know if there are other different kinds and it's just very confusing on the Mandalorian religion. Okay. I think we have to take everything that Bo-Katan says with a bit of a grain of salt because she's literally was the sister of the Duchess of Mandalore for a while. So everything she's, she's well, going to be her whole bit. life. She was a sister. Cause you know, that doesn't well, until her sister died. Oh, okay. Um, Oh, Darth Maul. You're a jerk. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, but like, she's going to have this superior attitude about everything. Like she's probably going to be like a purist almost like, no, you have to be born a Mandalorian and that's how you're a Mandalorian. You can't be like brought into it or something. Yeah. She so, also thinks you can take your helmet off and it doesn't matter. Well, that actually the helmet thing was, um, an offshoot of the main side though. That was like a cult basically. So I think she's right in that regard, but the whole like, Oh, you weren't born into it or, Oh, you're a clone. Doesn't mean, it means you can't be a Mandalorian. I think you have to be careful about that because and this she's is gonna a big, see things differently. This is a big deal for the series because Din Djarin is, um, he's a foundling. 
Yeah. He's part of the Children of the Watch. He's not born into being a Mandalorian um, with that. But yet, you know, we're going to see that he's got maybe more of a right to mm. being a Mandalorian now than others. But that'll, that'll happen. We'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. But uh, what did you think, uh, BB Nate, about that moment when, you know, they split up? You've got the, the, the uh, you know, the awesome ladies of of the Mandalorian Which series. I kind of appreciated the way they did that. You know, Explain. like, uh, so... I, talk, I was talking with Savannah. It kind of reminded me of the scene in Endgame, you know, when they had all yeah. like the female superheroes come together and do it. And I felt like it was a little campy the way in they the did Endgame. it. In a little forced. Yeah, a little forced and a little campy in Endgame. But in this, I didn't, I was like, I was watching it and then they were doing stuff and I was like, it was only when they got to the bridge that I was like, oh, wait, that was all the girls doing it. I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, because Boba Fett's gone. Yeah, it was a much subtler way, but it was still, like, really cool. Like, they kicked butt. It was pretty cool, because Gina Carano and Katie, uh, who obviously plays Cara Dune, Mm. and uh, Katie Sackhoff, who plays Bo-Katan, they were, like, having this Twitter love fest uh, (laughs) uh, yesterday about, like, hashtag squad goals and Mm -hmm. sharing photos of it and stuff like that, which, you know, there's part of me that was like, come on, it's not been 48 hours, that's a spoiler. And then I'm like, ah, screw it, let them have fun. (laughs) Um, with it, but, uh, they split up and, and Mando is off on his own. He's going to try to rescue, um, Grogu, Baby Baby Yoda. Yeah. Close off the dark troopers and, um, say Baby Yoda. And the dark troopers are, are are armed and they're ready to come out. And there's this confrontation where he gets the doors sealed again, but one of them gets out first, uh, basically, you know, it happens a little bit more dramatically than that. But uh, what was it like to see? the dark troopers really battling as we, you know, last time we just saw them fly around. What, yeah. what was it like they to see were, them? They um, were very much dangerous on the <laughs> side much of, of combat. Um, I mean, they just felt like henchmen in a couple episodes ago, just yeah. go grab the kid and then fly away. But in this one, they were holding their own, as we could see. And Sammy w- was like really worried when he kept punching Mando into the wall. I wasn't because I'm like, it's Beskar. Nothing will happen <laughs> because they've made that pretty clear in this series. But it was a little freaky and it just shows how strong Beskar actually is. That's an interesting take uh, on it. Now, there was this uh, conversation that happened a little later where they were talking about them being third generation and they are Pershing, I think, is the one that had talked about it earlier. Maybe something to that. Effect, I think it was yeah. Pershing earlier. Uh, he talks about how this is the third generation. They took the human element out. They're not humans inside these. Because this that was the, fa- the fatal flaw. That was the fatal flaw. What do you think about that? Do we, uh, Savvy, do you think that there could be moments where we see, uh, you know, generation two or generation one uh, dark troopers and start to see humans in this dark trooper armor, maybe in Bad Batch or in one of these other series? What would you think about seeing something like that? I mean, they've got to still be somewhere unless they just killed them all, which I guess isn't necessarily out of range for, you know, I mean, they're bad guys, so, you know, yeah, just get rid the of them. They didn't work the way we wanted them to. We don't care. Just be gone. We'll just keep going until we get what we want. But, yeah, they could still be out there somewhere hanging out, waiting for a new battle. Sam, you were talking about um, um, I, well, I lost it there. We were, I was thinking about the next question. We were, You were mentioned something about, oh, the fatal flaw. Mm-hmm. Uh, explain, you know, kind of what that's like to think about. Is this is this taking us back to like uh, separatist Clone Wars, you know, Trade Federation type thought process, or how's that work? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I can understand where they're coming from. Humans make mistakes, right? Like their reaction times are slower. They've got judgment issues. So sometimes taking that out and just putting a a, a robot brain in there makes things easier. So they remove that element. Also, uh. Humans are pretty squishy. <laughs> um, right. So, you you know, you, I mean, let's just be honest. A human couldn't punch through a blast door like those uh, droids were able to. So I think they're just stronger in that regard, too. So it makes sense as to why they're doing that. But the, we know the Empire used human troopers for less of an effectiveness and more of a, like, disposable. psychological warfare. That and they're disposable. You know, uh, like, you, they would take them from planets, like these children from planets. At least the First Order did. I'm not sure if the Empire did this. And then put them in the helmets, and when they go back to that planet, you know, the parents might be, if they're rebelling, they might be scared to shoot a stormtrooper because they don't know if it's Mm. their kid, you know. So I think that's why they kept still using humans, but the droids were superior, at least at this time. Well, but then again, if you go back to the prequel era, the droids droids were a problem because they, they couldn't make their own decisions 
as, as effectively as humans did. And they were easily defeated through shut, you know, the Jedi didn't seem to have a problem. But with, this is years, decades in the future. So technology could have uh, progressed pretty And a certain Jedi didn't seem to have a problem with. Well, it's, yeah, that's right. yeah, that's true. That's actually maybe a big part of this. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's go back to you, Sam. Um, there was this moment before they go to board the Imperial cruiser where bo is explaining to Mando what she expects from him when it comes to Moff Gideon. And, um, you know, what, what do you think about that, that whole sequence and about the, her, you know, she's, she's got a one track mind right now is what it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, everything she's been doing up until this point has been to find Gideon and get the dark saber. Um, and she was like, you know, you, I don't care what you do. Just bring Gideon to me. Have him surrender to me. I don't really, I need him alive. You know, she was very adamant about that in the beginning when they were planning stuff. Um, so yeah, I mean, I can understand why she's frustrated. This guy so through some means, we don't know how stole her rule of Mandalore at this point. Right. I mean, it was rightfully hers to, to have until he somehow took it. And I don't know how, you know, he may have taken it dishonorably and like just taken the savior. I mean, it, it may doesn't not look like he's combat. planning on ruling Mandalore anytime. Right. Soon, he so. just is like wielding around a saber for no reason. And she, I don't think she likes that. So I, I, I think it was a good setup. Yeah. Savvy, do you think that bo um grudge with Moff Gideon is based on the dark saber or is it based on Moff Gideon's role in what, you know, this is like the third time that we've heard, that the empire basically turned Mandalore to glass is what they say. Like the heat that of the, of the destruction just turned everything to glass. Do you think her frustration or her, her, her thought process regarding Bob Gideon is based on dark saber or is it based on that? That's a good question. My first reaction, whenever she was explaining how much she was basically obsessed with getting Moth Gideon back, I was only thinking towards the idea of the dark saber because I was like, why would she really care about him specifically? She just wants that dark saber back. We didn't know at that point that more or less, like, she had to be the one to win it back in mm-hmm. combat. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that at the time. Um, so I think that kind of helps make sense why she wanted to specifically be the one. But that's a good question whether or not it's specifically for the dark saber or just to get back at him as a person. Mm. I think yeah. it's, I think it's a mixture. She's probably definitely holding a grudge against him personally because she probably blames him for what happened, but. She also has some major beef with him over like, hey, that's like that's my weapon. I want it back. Hmm. Mm-hmm. BB Nate, is Mandalore uh, salvageable from your perspective, or oh. is this just you know is or is is the planet completely destroyed, or is that just imperial propaganda um, put out by? Mike I don't Gideon think to- that Bo-Katan would be trying to rule Mandalore if there was nothing to rule. Yeah, she's. You know, I think he's. I think point. that she has, um, kind of a reason. And so maybe Mandalore is a people, and that's what she's thinking if the planet is destroyed. But I, I don't think that that's really what she's thinking. A resettled like yeah. Mandalorian gr- group or something potentially. Okay, so Savvy, let's let's talk a little bit about um, you know the, the the squad gets to the bridge and there's no Moff Gideon, and then immediately it shifts to Mando getting to to Baby Yoda's or Grogu's uh, cell and um, opening it up and you see him sitting there and then there's the dark saber hovering over him. Sam, and- do you remember whenever that happened, I literally looked over at you right before the door opened and I was like, he's in there. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, I, I, literally, I like literally saw nice. as soon as he got there, I was like, Moff Gideon's in there right now. Like I can totally see that happening right now. Like he's definitely going to be right there. And then whenever he goes in, he like Gives him all of this crap about like, oh, I don't really care about him. I just wanted his blood. I don't really care. You can take him. As soon as he started walking oh, towards him and he had his back towards Moff Gideon, I was like, are you really? Oh, he was expecting I it. mean, I know he probably was, but it, it definitely made my heart but race he a little bit. So I was like, like, no, wait, no, he, that's not right. That's not how Moff Gideon acts. He's not. He's just trying to trick you. He was he, so convincing for just a split he, second. But he was and too emotional. Like, he's not an emotional guy. Everything he says is so matter of fact all the time and nothing phases him. So for him to be all emotional, I was like... Th- this isn't right. During the second watch through, I was talking with Dad. I'm like, he is a lot like Thrawn. Yeah. He has very Thrawn like tendencies. Just kind of cold, cold, calculating. And, yeah. Like knows everything, knows their enemy but, really, really well. And who knows? Maybe that's why he took the Darksaber as a trophy. Mm. And he understands the importance of it. But he's using it as a weapon and it's psychological. Just says the. 
heirloom it's a symbol from of the fact that Cindula. he defeated Mandalore. Yeah, it's he like destroyed the heirloom Mandalore. of from Hera. Yeah, the family. Was, it, yeah, that's, that's one of those BB-8 moments there. But the difference between, I think, between Gideon and Thrawn is Gideon is just like um, malevolent. I think he's just like he likes seeing people like messed up. Like he's he, he's straight up evil. Thrawn's not a good guy. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think he takes as much pleasure. And seeing people like suffer as does Gideon. So I I totally bought it. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Really? Oh my gosh. I was like it makes sense. He just he needed the blood. He doesn't care. This is his bargaining chip. Uh take him. Take and I I thought I was totally taken the thrown off when he's maybe that's just because I'm naive, but when he like attacked him, I'm like, holy crap, he attacked him. Okay, also, I just thought of something. So, remember how on the ship, Mando was pretty much, like, telling Bo-Katan, like, yeah, sure, like, I don't really care about anything except for the kid. You can have the freaking dark saber if you want it. Who cares? And then whenever he got in there, he was, I mean, to me, I feel like he kind of almost stabbed my, or he, he was stabbing Bo-Katan in the back because, like, he could have, he wasn't going for the dark saber. Sure, he ended up getting it, but he didn't care about it at all. He wasn't really planning. So was- he got it because he didn't care about it. it yeah, was- but like my question was during that, I was like, okay, so if he did walk away with Baby Yoda or Grogu, if he walked out of there and Moff Gideon was straight oh, up, yeah. what would he have done? Was he going to leave everybody there I and thought just so. leave? I, uh, yeah, that, I thought he was just going to take a TIE fighter. And-, and that's right. what sold it for me was because I believed that all that Mando cared about it was Baby Yoda, was, Baby Yoda yeah. was Grogu. And if he was got to walk out of there and let God, let, let Moff Gideon that live. That was his mission. Then he's accomplished what he needs. Bo-Katan and the rest of those people, they can deal with Moff Gideon. I'm taking Grogu and I'm getting out of here. Yeah, I mean, Bo-Katan was the one who needed the ship to help take he's, back Mandalore. He's like, already, he's already denied every, you know, turned his back on everything that he, uh, you know, his, his, his religion in some ways, right? He keeps taking his mask off. He keeps, yeah, this is the way which dominated season one doesn't exist for him. Right. And all he cares about, and it's because of Grogu. To be fair, he also did tell him that. He did say, my only, like, my only deal that I'm really working on here is getting back to kids. So it wouldn't necessarily be stabbing them in the back if that's what he ended up and, doing. But still, like, they're his team. He's only there because of them. Like, he needed them. It would have been kind of. And I'm rude. sure if it went that direction, Mando would have known that the next place that he would have gone is to get out of there. They would have gone there. That's that's what they were. That's what he, they would have been thinking. Well, no, but baby, so like, but, okay, he's not at the bridge. He's trying to escape. Immediately go to the Tie Fighters, and then, but there's no way for him to get out. The launch tube is not working. There's, there's two giant, launch tubes on on an Imperial cruiser. That's there's a, a, for, a rear and an aft, a, a forward oh. and an aft uh, uh, launch tube. Ha, here's the thing, though. Bo-Katan's there for one reason and one reason only. She doesn't care. About Grogu. Nope. She doesn't care about saving baby Yoda. She cares about Moff Gideon and the Darksaber. And that's the only reason that she agreed to go was because he knew where Moff Gideon was yeah. and he needs her help and he's willing to take her to Moff Gideon in order if she helps him get Grogu. So they both have their own agendas at this point. Um, which leads us to what happens when they get to the bridge, right? Cause there's this big battle and it's, it's cool, but it doesn't really take that long for, I mean, we knew it was coming, right? The Beskar yeah. staff versus the oh, dark saber yeah. and the, and all of that, that happened pretty quickly. That wasn't the finale of the episode, which are the ending of the episode, which is what I kind of expected. It happened, you know, halfway through, then they get to the bridge and this is where, this is where that manipulative Moff Gideon starts kicking back in again, where he starts, you know, digging at Bo Katan. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Sam, you know, this, there's this moment where J- Dinger Mando is just kind of like, here, take it. I don't care about the dark saber. You want the dark saber? I yield. Here, take it. And Bo Katan rejects that. That's a huge shift in this story of the dark saber because of what happened with Bo Katan in season four of the Mandal, of uh, Star Wars Rebels. Explain. Yeah. I mean, Sabine got the dark saber. Um, she used it for a bit and then was like, Mandalore needs a true. She earned the dark side. Right. Though. She won it in combat. And, Against Maul. Uh, no. It was that, um, Imperial guy. Oh, okay. okay. Remember? I was uh, anyway. Right. Um, so she had the saber and then later on she was like, you know, Mandalore needs a true, le- true leader. Um, and that's not me. So she, she hands the dark saber over to, 
um, Bo-Katan, and she accepts it, and that's it. That's the last we've heard about it. So it, it was conf- Nathan and I were both really confused when she wouldn't take the saber from Mando. I mean, sure, Gideon explained was like, you know, the power of the dark saber doesn't come from who has it. It's the story behind it, um, which makes sense. But I, I didn't understand why she accepted it from Sabine, but not Mando. Yeah, Savvy, do you think that... That, did you sense in the conversation between Get, Moff Gideon and Bo Katan or the, the things that they were saying to Mando about the Darksaber, um, that there was a story there that we hadn't heard because there seemed to be like they were both on the same page. Moff Gideon and Bo Katan were in total agreement over this. Did you get the impression that they knew something you that could, we like, didn't know? You could like see it in her soul. Mm-hmm. He was like cutting into the deepest part of everything she cares about. Like, he really got to her. And so, I mean, yeah, there definitely was, like, some kind of history. How did he know so much about this Darksaber? And Mando had no idea what it was. But, you know, it it definitely was, like, an interesting exchange between everybody. I think why Bo-Katan accepted the Saber from Sabine is because she didn't think that it mattered at that point. Maybe, Mm -hmm. we don't know what happened, but maybe she did try to rule Mandalore. She's like, I have the Darksaber. And people were like, you didn't win it in a duel. You don't have the power. They didn't so she her. lost it. Somebody took it from her in a duel. She lost it. They and then somehow made its way to Moff Gideon. And she looks like she's been kind of exiled. I mean, she has two other Mandalorian. We don't even know where that guy went. Where did that guy went? Yeah, he that, wasn't in it. He wasn't yeah. in the episode. So one now. Um, that's following her and helping her with her mission. And I think that that's why she wouldn't accept it is because she had a problem once and doesn't want to have that trouble again. I think maybe something just kind of came to my mind, whatever you're saying that is she was kind of all talk up to that point. She was saying all the different reasons why she had to be the one to take it. No one understood why. But then once her plan didn't come through, she got real quiet. You know, Mm -hmm. like she didn't have anything else to say. Everything that she had been saying got ripped out from underneath her. And now she has nothing. You know, that's a really good point. I think that not only do they have a story there, I think that Moff Gideon was part of of. Uh, digging that 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 wedge between Bo-Katan and the rest of Mandalore uh, during whatever this this battle was when he mm. gets the dark saber when he conquers Mandalore he's used her you know she's already I think the the point of this is she's already received this title of Mandalore through the yielding of the dark saber to her once without her earning it yeah. And something went horribly wrong as a result of it. She can't go back to try to rule Mandalore again with that having happened a second time. She's got to earn mm. the title of Mandalore. I mean, I, I'm sure that the reason they duel for the dark saber is to make sure that the person wielding the dark saber can defend themselves. Can defend themselves and is more powerful than the last person that wielded it. If they're able to best them, then they're better. That's true. And so if she doesn't doesn't duel, then that means that she we don't know if they're better than the last ruler. So I mean Yeah. I think you're right. You know, it's a it's a it's a an honor shame culture and and at this point I sense great shame in, in Bo Katan yeah. and in what happened with uh, at the end of um or during the Galactic Civil War and what happened to Mandalore, there's a story there we need to know mm. um, going forward, and we haven't heard it yet. Now, um, we spent basically, you know, 30 minutes, almost 30 minutes talking about this episode, and we've only briefly touched on it. But let's do it. All right, let's go to... Turbish our- the Porg was in this episode? Like, what? What? No, no. <laughs> no. Uh, someone, uh, dare I say, even for Tatooine Sons, much greater than in the Star Wars uh, s- yeah. saga than even Turbish the Porg. And that is our uh, beloved uh, Luke Skywalker. Yeah. What? Woo. All right, walk me through what it was like for you to see it it felt like return of the jedi luke skywalker he looked like return of the jedi luke skywalker he had that green lightsaber i know steel saunders was crying um Mm. when he saw that because he had this whole ignite the green um campaign throughout the sequel trilogy that never came to be uh, because his dream was to see luke skywalker yield that green lightsaber again um what was it like for you guys to see all of this we'll let we'll let ladies go first abby what was it like for you to see luke skywalker in live action again the entire time he had his hood on Of course, there was a slight doubt in my mind. What if it's not him and I'm just crazy? But as soon as he pulled it down, I knew it was going to be like this huge reveal because, yeah, I mean, it's like it looks like young Luke. 
it, it doesn't really make sense that, you know, at first, like, oh my gosh, how is that even possible? Of course, we love technology, but <laughs> yeah, it, that was just like a huge, like, okay, what if it's not? Don't get my hopes up. Okay, it actually is him. Yay. <laughs> was it cool to see him, though, for really like back in the end? And, and that whole sequence, Sam, the whole sequence where he's taking out the, the dark uh, troopers. Yeah. What's this? I mean, every, we're not the only ones to have talked about this. It's being talked about all over. What did, what did it feel like? When I mean, you, even when we were first watching it, when he got out of the elevator there, it felt just like the hallway scene from Rogue One with Darth Vader. I mean, it felt just like it, but it wasn't. He wasn't being evil because, you know, we talked about how it kind of helped that they were droids. The dark troopers were droids were not people because if you saw Luke doing all that and they were like actual troopers, That'd be pretty messed up. Like, the stuff he was doing would be messed up. But they were droids. So we're like, yeah, get him. You know, slice him up. So it was cool. You know, I mean, and towards the end, he, I'm sure he just crushed the one just to, like, I don't know, show off or whatever. It's for fun. Yeah. I mean, and that's when you first really, like, you start to realize, wait, this is no doubt Luke Skywalker. Because when he reaches that hand out, it's that it's gloved glove. hand. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. The gloved hand, whenever I saw that, that was also another huge tip off that it had to be him. Yeah. BB Nate, what was it like for you seeing Luke Skywalker? And why was this bittersweet? Um, of course, it's amazing to see Luke Skywalker back in live action. That's great. I'm excited to see where it goes in the future. But I was really disappointed. I was really gunning for it to be Ezra. I I didn't expect it. and But you didn't expect Luke Skywalker. Right. So we were both in the same boat. But I was disappointed that it wasn't Ezra. I had a tiny bit of hope when I saw a green lightsaber because he did have a green lightsaber yeah. at the end of the series. But then I saw the gloved hand and I got really disappointed. And that was like, it wasn't a, f- not, it was a f- great reveal, but it was disappointing for me and kind of like, oh, it's a little bit of a letdown. Yeah. I think that's really an interesting, um, dynamic to bring to the conversation about this moment because for, you know, us 40 year olds, you know, guys in our sweaty, sweaty guys in our ba- parents' basement type, you know, <laughs> that, that idea of the, the Star Wars fan that grew up with the original trilogy and, and that type of thing. Seeing Luke Skywalker is the, is the ultimate moment uh, yeah. for us. But for you guys, what did you think about it, Sam? You're a big Ezra Bridger fan. Were you, did you have any, like, a- anything for you that way? I've always been of the, um, the camp that's, I, I think that they're not, we're not going to see Ezra until the Ahsoka series. Okay. I think that's what the plot of it is. She's looking for Thrawn and looking for Ezra, and that's what's going on. So I wasn't expecting to see him. I, I, I would have been thrilled to have seen him, um, but I, I was never really holding out hope for it or anything. I, I'm, I think Luke works. I think it makes more sense as to you know training Baby Yoda. That's just what Luke's mission has been after excuse me, after uh, episode six. So I think it makes sense, but I would have loved to see Ezra, but I wasn't holding that hope. But it's neat. It's interesting because for BB Nate, it was a disappointment. And I'm wondering if for other fans that grew up you, your age frame where Star Wars was Disney era. And so Luke Skywalker was part of your dad's Star Wars. I mean, you like the sto- the original yes. trilogy. You lo- Return of the Jedi is your favorite one of the original trilogy movies, mm-hmm. without a doubt. But your Star Wars has you're much more emotionally connected to Ezra Bridger than you are to Luke Skywalker. Is yeah. that correct? Rebels is my thing when it comes to Star Wars. So yeah. so when there's a possibility that it could have been Ezra and it ends up being Luke, your perspective and your reaction to it is very different than Steel Saunders, whose favorite movie in all Star Wars is Return, Return of the Jedi, Jedi. Mm-hmm. and his favorite character is Luke Skywalker. And I think that's an interesting way of looking at Star Wars. Just the thing is... Um, I've been one of those people, I love the Skywalker saga, I'm happy they did the sequel trilogy and everything, but I'm one of those people that I'm like, give it a rest. Okay. We've milked the cow enough, let the <laughs> air, other characters from Rebels, let new characters, all that kind of stuff, and they are starting to do that, which is great, but I wanted the smaller characters, I kind of took a back seat during the whole sequel trilogy and prequel trilogy to kind of get pushed to the front, and they are, but I was just like... I, and the thing that disappointed me more, I'm like, okay, they just kept, they just brought in Luke Skywalker again. And I'm like, I kind of was hoping for that not to happen. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot more to talk about. Um, and, and really the future of the Mandalorian is, is up in the air. And so we've got lots of questions that need to be answered. We're going to do that. But before that, we're going to go over our poll from our, our prediction episode and, um, to maybe even get, I don't know, one of our most special reviews in the history of the show. That'll be up after this break. This is Tatooine Sons. Are you brainless? 
I never ask that question till after I've done it. What? No. All right. Last week's pod, or rather, it was like our special episode podcast poll of the week, uh, which wasn't for a week. It was like 24 hours. But anyway, mm-hmm. uh, what, what's your prediction for season two finale of The Mandalorian? We had four options that were on there. Mando is headed to Camino. That was the one I was most convinced was actually going to happen. Thrawn is the big baddie. Um, I thought that was probably going to happen as well. A Jedi will save Grogu. That was kind of ambiguous. And yeah, it was pretty no, general. I, I, yeah. That was that was what I thought was going to happen. And then other comment below. Uh, other comment below always gets the lowest when we you know we do these. So twelve point seven percent. Then we had Mando was headed to Camino. Only or no, excuse me. Thrawn is the big baddie. Only got fifteen point two percent. Mando is headed to Camino. Got twenty four point one percent. And the winner of last week's pod, or pack, podcast poll was a Jedi will save Grogu. We didn't say specifically, and we might have had more fun with it if we had said specifically Luke Skywalker yeah. or something like that. But um, any surprises on the poll numbers no. there? No, that seems pretty logical. Yeah, cool. Um, I side with it. All right. This week's uh, poll is going to be real simple, simple. Season three of The Mandalorian will pick up right where we left off. Will be the book of Boba Fett. There no. we go, Nate. Uh, Sam, we can talk about happening. that. Or we'll I have can, a... Si- I, can, I can disprove that right now. We'll have a significant time jump. That's a possibility. And some people are thinking we could be going four or five years in the future. After Grogu's already trained. And, gr- and coming back. back. Yeah. Um, or other comment below. Which would you pick between those? Let's we'll start with you, Miss Savvy. Can you come back to me? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think it's going to pick up right where we left off. Well, okay. I th- I'm like right in between the pick up right where we left off and have a significant time jump. I don't think it'll be... I think there will be a time jump, but I'm thinking maybe a year tops. Okay, so not like five, ten no, years or something no, like that. No, not even close. All right. And you are... Com- you're not... Neither of you, maybe Nate or Samuel Head, are convinced that there's... That season three is actually the Book of Boba Fett. That's no. one of the theories no. that's out there. It's Never not. thought that. It's not. Okay, explain. A former Lucasfilm employee said, from what I understand, from when I was working there... The Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian Season 3 have different shooting schedules. Also, Pedro Pascal has signed on for Mandalorian Season 3. So, I don't think okay. that we will. That might, might answer that question. Yeah. That's cool. Overall, let's just do this while we're here. We're talking Book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Give me your thoughts. This was, What was it like to see Boba Fett take Jabba's throne? I am glad that Boba's back to the kind of bad guy we, we know him as. I liked him in Mando. Don't get me wrong. I liked that he had for lack of a better term, honor, or at least he held to a code. He always um, has. You know, there's there's something to be said about that. But he's been a bad guy from the beginning, let's just be honest. And I'm kind of glad he's back to that point. You know, he, now he's a crime lord, like the crime lord of the underworld at this point. I kind of like it. I'm yeah, happy. he sort of says, I'm tired of taking people's orders. I'm going to be in charge now. Yeah. Savannah, what did you think about this? Is it going to be a time jump? Is it going to be Book of Boba Fett? Where you land on that one? I agree that it's not the Book of Boba Fett. As soon as I saw that at the end, I... I honestly thought movie. Okay. That's the first thing I thought. Like I mean, a, either a Disney Plus movie or yeah, something like that? Yeah, that's the first thing I thought. It doesn't have to be accurate. It might be another series. But that's the first thing that went through my mind is, oh my gosh, what if it's another movie and it's like a movie about Boba Fett? That mm. would be cool to me. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of with you. I'm, I'm in between the whole time thing. I don't think it's going to pick up right where it left off because... I mean, what are they going to do next? I think they all need <laughs> to take time to... watch them take a road trip? Yeah. Yeah, like, they're just going to be... That's what it's been the whole series. Yeah. <laughs> a side quest is what's yeah, next. Yeah, it would so. literally be a whole side quest before they get to something else, because, I mean, I don't know. Are they, I mean, Moff Gideon, he's he's going away. You know, like, what are we going to do next? We yeah. need some time to consider what, what to do next with Yeah, the there's all these questions, and we're going to have to answer those, but before that... We got another review. Dude, can can I did? speak my mind to this poll? No, no. I, don't, I don't really care about no. your, okay. your your opinions. Oh no, go ahead, BB. <laughs> I do think that there will be a time jump, a significant one, because I think that Book of Boba Fett will bridge that. Oh. Um, oh, that's why they're having it. Oh, he's a smart kid. They're having yeah. it released same time, so you're not confused as to what happened before. Hmm. So that's just why I think that it will be. And also, Pedro Pascal stunt double came out and said, "Don't believe everything you read." Pedro Pascal is returning from Mandalorian okay. season three. All right. So we got a review. Uh, this will be two weeks in a row that we've had. Wow. Reviews. wow and, y'all are and, really going. And there was a challenge that was put out on the last uh, episode um, because Savvy hadn't given a review yet. And mm. so we were like, you know, it would be mm. tough to beat it. So if you can't beat it, don't put one out. But I think she, she's, she's taken up the challenge and she's actually going to read her review right now on the show 
uh, for herself. This is the first for us. We've never had a review read by the reviewer. So wow. I, I'm, I'm waiting with bated breath. Let's do this. Well, don't hype it up too much. I could have gone on for like a whole book, but I decided Aww. to just try to keep it short and sweet. Emphasis on the sweet, though. <laughs> okay, so the title... I wish I could give this podcast six stars. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> the search for the best Star Wars podcast ever is over. This father-son team at Tatooine Sons brings a fascinating perspective to all your favorite Star Wars stories. Their knowledge is evident and will keep you coming back for more. Oh, that's awesome. You know, you should you should like start a business where you do nothing but write reviews. Cause oh my was, gosh, I would love that. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't be accurate. But Impressive. Every word in that sense was wrong. Like that one's probably not all I'm very good accurate. at biased reviews. That was a biased review, quite often. right? You know, that's pretty awesome. All right. Well, well thank you. That, You're welcome. That was it. All right. We've got six questions. Questions coming. I could probably come up with 60, um, but we're going to try to answer these six after this break. Um, we're going to take up the challenge for that. This is Tatooine Sons. All right. There's both good news and bad news from the season two finale of The Mandalorian. The good news is that we don't have a massive cliffhanger where Baby Yoda was left in the clutches of an evil Imperial it's warlord. Crap. Grogu, sorry, baby Yoda. Um, the bad news is there are still more questions than answers about Mando, baby Yoda, Grogu, uh, and uh, Bo Katan, and even the future of the show. Bokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. The Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. All right, let's start with this first big question. I'm going to start with you, Samuelette. Yes. What's up next for Mando, now that this has all happened? Where are we going from here? Yeah, I think... I've said this from the beginning, after watching the episode. I think what's going to happen now is Mando season three is going to shift. The previous two seasons have been about Mando saving and protecting baby Yoda. That's been the story and he's gone. He's with Luke. Now he's safe for the moment. Right. So Mando doesn't have a purpose at this point. I don't think he's going to go back to bounty hunting. I think he's done with that. He's kind of rejected that whole lifestyle at this point. Plus he doesn't have a ship. I think what's going to happen is he's going to go with Bo-Katan, because they mentioned it at the beginning. Bo-Katan's like, you should join us in this mission. He's going to go with Bo-Katan, since he's got the Darksaber now, and he's going to help reclaim Mandalore. And Season 3 is going to be more about his struggle with his identity. Is he a Mandalorian? Is he not? What does he do with the Darksaber? There's going to probably be a bit of a power struggle between him and uh, Bo-Katan. So I think that's what Season 3 is going to be about. What about you, Sabi? What do you think? I agree. Okay. All right. That was easy. Right. <laughs> this is good. You two are on the same page. All right, yes. let's go. So, um, DNA. I really do think, I always thought it was going to be a power struggle between bo and Mando. It's actually now going to be about the Mandalorian, not <laughs> Grogu. Um, yeah, he's actually yeah, he's a admit. Mandalorian. Yeah. Now. Um, so, I think that they are going to try to go and reclaim um, Mandalore, if they haven't already, if it's a time jump, they most likely already have, or they're gathering an army. Maybe we see Sabine and you want to see a conquest. Of yeah, Mandalore? like everyone, kind of like a giant battle or rushing, like a Lord of the Rings kind of type thing. <laughs> um, but I think that they are going to reclaim Mandalore. I think there will be a huge power struggle between Bo Katan and Mandalorian. And I think at the end of the series, we see them duel it out for the Dark Saber. Yeah, that's interesting because we've got you know Bo Katan. We mentioned it earlier. Her focus throughout this series or this season, um, obviously that's all we had her for, has been get to Moff Gideon, conquer him, win back the dark saber, and now all of that is Finished. up in the air. It's yeah. it's it's in it's in question now. Um, you know what's she going to do now that Gideon is in, in the custody of the, of the New Republic and Mando has custody or has control of the dark saber? What do you think, Savannah? She definitely had probably been thinking about exactly what was going to happen for who knows how long. She had this planned out. She was obsessing over it. Now that it's not happening the way that she had planned it, she's probably freaking out. I would So be you're too. basically saying that Bo-Katan is the stereotypical Star Wars fan. 
Yes. <laughs> she has all of her expectations yes. that have now Heck gone complete, completely blown away, and she doesn't know how to function. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, hate, I really do hate that for her. I hope she figures it out. <laughs> what do you think about that, BB Nate? Oh, uh, I mean, she doesn't care about Moff Gideon anymore. The only reason she cared about Moff Gideon was the Dark Saber. Yep. So I wouldn't say that she cared about Moff Gideon. She cared about the Dark Saber. Just Moff Gideon was in custody of it. So now that Mando's in custody, I think she feels like it's in better hands now. But I do think that she's still frustrated that it's not with her. Um, and of course, I'm not saying that that's a problem. She does have the right. She is the next in line to be the ruler of Mandalore. But she doesn't have the dark saber, which means that she isn't the Mandalore. So I think that there will be. I think that there is going to be. The fact that Mando will always be, I don't want this, you should have it. Mm. I don't think he'll get power hungry or anything. Mm. That's just not him. For a second, I thought we were going to have a Lord of the Rings moment and he was going to, you know, I was going to like turn him or whatever. And he's like, this is mine now. You know? <laughs> My precious. Right. So, so, that was good. Yeah. That was oh, I'm sorry. That was, that was getting weird there. <laughs> My precious. Yes. <laughs> Stupid fat habit. Well, Sorry. okay, that one was actually good. Yeah, I had to get it. I had to get it worked up. All right, you were going to say something. <laughs> I had to get the spittle up there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow, that totally threw me. Sorry, off. he was talking about <laughs> like uh, you know, surrendering the, uh, the dark saber. Dark saber. And, okay, and, yeah. So yeah. that's kind of where my brain was going to, like what Sammy said. Like, you know, what if all of a sudden Mando's like, "Yeah, I am in charge, so all of you can, you know, just." Just deal with it. He didn't do that, though, so I think that's very honorable, and I think that bo going to be able to, like, see that and be like, okay, it's not like he just decided, you know what, huh, sucks to be you right now, like, I'm in charge now, but at the same time, like we've talked about, she is kind of the rightful person to have it, mm. and she's going to have an issue, like, hey, you're a freaking foundling, like, who said you could wield that? I should be able to, so, like, I definitely think she's going to try to get over it, but I don't think she's going to. Do you think that they're setting up a, I'm not talking about, like, tension between Bo-Katan and Mando. I'm talking about all out her obsession with becoming the Mandalore, taking rulership over her people, getting that dark saber back under her control is going to create significant conflict. Even can we say civil, like, I, she's going to look at the, at Mando and say, you're a youngling, Foundling. A foundling, whatever they are. Uh, the younglings are the dead ones in the temple. Is that yes. Right? Oh, okay. Too soon. Uh, it's always too soon. Um, except Grogu, he got out. Um, Good for him. With R2. Oh, do you think it was R2? Do I, you yes. think that R2 and Grogu know each other? I, I think they I, know yes, each other, yes, for 100%. sure. Because she, he was all like holding on to Mando's leg and then heard R2 and like ran over to him. Like, Wait a sec. And, and, and R2, R2 like, like the little pulled up thing. its leg and like looked down at it and it's like, Wait, he's alive. Yeah, it seemed like they had recognized each other. Do you think that we're going to see a Children of the Watch, Mando-led faction at war with a Bo-Katan, you know, pure blood Mandalorian faction for the control of the Darksaber and Mandalore? Well, I think for that, Mando's got to change his mind and be like, oh, wait, no, I want this now and start leading. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he's going to stay the way he he is. I think they're going to find some loophole and give it to him. Maybe maybe what will end up happening is instead of them going winning in combat, say she ends up somehow saving uh, Mando's life, and in turn Mando gives her the saber as like, you've saved me, like a life debt sort of thing. I think that could be a bit of a loophole that could work without them having to be (laughs) at each other's So is this going to be like a comedy season where he keeps trying to... Get himself in trouble. <laughs> you're, you're taking it. <laughs> oh no, I'm falling off the cliff. <laughs> I um I think this entire series, based on the title of the series, is that him becoming is him the becoming the Mandalore. Um, mm-hmm. and he had to go through the Grogu stuff in season one, Baby Yoda stuff in season one, to learn how to have compassion and love, and to to begin to separate himself from bounty hunter stuff. Season two was him to continue to move down that, but also to learn about maybe this creed, this is the way stuff isn't really the way next. Now he's got control of the dark saber and the season three is going to be him about learning what it means. Do I, he doesn't want to rule. He doesn't want to lead, but he can't go back. 
to being what he wasn't. And he's going to start seeing that somebody has to take this leadership role. And he's going to be forcing him. It's going to be forced on him because he has the dark saber. And then season four is this big conflict, this big battle over who the Mandalore is. And I, I think it's going to be bo I so, think that, I think you're getting a Mandalore is, this is Dave Filoni guys. Dave Filoni wrote the lore about the civil, great civil true. wars within Mandalore. This is the great we, civil war think happening that again. Makes, this kind of gives me like Game of Thrones vibes Do we think that Filoni makes bo a bad guy? Wouldn't that be the coolest thing for him to do? Uh, more antagonist, I think. I, I don't no, know. I think, I think that she's going to... There's, she's going to be able to make an argument for why she's the good guy. Yeah. It's going to be gray. It's going to be, she's Bo Katan. She's Duchess Satine's sister. She's ruled Mandalore before. She's been with them this whole time. She's pure blooded Mandalorian. She's got the support of this whole faction. And then you've got Din Djurin who won this Darksaber in battle against the one that defeated Mandalore. And he deserves the leadership role. And this group of children of the watch and the, and the younglings so this and this whole, that have been, that have, this is the way people. Families. And they're both going to have legitimate arguments. Arguments and it's going to create a civil war. Do you think we'll have like among fans a bit of like a Captain America civil war thing, like yeah. Team Cap, Team? And I'm excited about Tony. It. I'm, I'm, I would be totally I'm all cool for, with that. I'm all for Mando. He's. I right would be player. with Mando too, but I mean, it's still it's interesting. And then all these fanboys that were like, "Oh, we get to see Bo Katan in live action." Your Clone they, Wars people are, gonna are side going to side. Bo-Katan. The fans are going to side with Bo Katan, and your your. Uh, you know, those that aren't as into us rebels and, and stuff like that and sequel trilogy and Mandalorian fans, they're going to side with or even with, OT fans. I mean, Din Djarin, it's going to be really interesting. Who's the bad guy in this series now? Moff Gideon's captured. He's being sent off with Cara Dune to a Republic prison. Um, I feel who, like we've kind of established yeah. what we all want. Do you think it's, it's really could happen? I think it's bo Yeah. I think it, She's I, she's not she's not into the Thrawn stuff, so Savannah's going to, she's bowing out. <laughs> she's like, I'm tapping out on this question. Okay, go. No, I think I, I really like the idea where you're going with it. I think it makes sense. I think it's the next like logical step in the series. And that way there's not a bad guy. You save Thrawn for the Ahsoka series, and then you've got this conflict and this struggle, but there's you don't need to bring in a new bad guy or something. Mm. It's just you twist the characters a bit. I, you, Nate, you think Thrawn's coming? Not in Mandalorian. Okay. In Ahsoka, yes. Um, I... Fully expecting that. That's going to be the story. Thrawn and Ezra and Ahsoka and Sabine and all that kind of stuff. But I do think that Bo-Katan could be the antagonist of this next movie. Uh, not movie. <laughs> uh, series. Yeah, the season and the rest of the series. Yeah. It'd be interesting. Well, all right, Savvy, there's a whole storyline from season two. Um, it was teased a little bit in season one. It was really developed in season two. And your favorite Star Wars film, as we established on the last episode, is Attack of the Clones. And this cloning stuff was really brought into this season and then just sort of forgotten. I haven't heard anybody on these review episodes talking about the cloning stuff. Oh, I have the blood now. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Do you think that we're going to see this continue to be developed in future seasons? Yeah, you never know. I guess I am going to go a little bit back to the last question. Go for it. You never know who else was like right under um, Moff Gideon, and somebody's gonna step up and take over this whole cloning process because I'm sure they're not gonna be like, "Oh, Moff Gideon's dead. Let's just throw away this blood we fought so hard to get." They're still gonna be <laughs> looking for something to do with it. Someone's going to step up. They've still got wherever it is. They've still got it going somewhere. They've still got all these scientists, I'm sure, are working on it. It's not like they're just going to be like, oh, well, I guess it's just time to take a little vacation until mm. someone tells us what to do. Like, there's going to be somebody working on it and definitely don't know what it's going to be, but it could it could go any direction. Yeah. Samuel, had Bad Batch tra- teaser that was given to us a week or so, a week and a half ago. Uh, shows them going back to Camino yes. in multiple sequences mm-hmm. um, with it. So they're bringing Camino back into consciousness again. It's going to happen this year uh, with the release of Bad Batch. Do you think that we see season three of The Mandalorian having something to do with Bad Batch, or excuse me, having something to do with Camino and the, the cloning and trying to uncover what's going on? Yeah, with that? I mean, I think they have to continue this cloning storyline. We know that that's what ends up happening with Palpatine. That's how Palpatine comes back. And that's still what, like, 20, 30 years in the future at this point. So they've still got plenty of time to flesh out that story. So I think there's still something to come from that. Now, whether that comes from Baby Yoda's blood, you know, all the way through, I'm not sure. But I think that there's still something to be said about this cloning storyline that they're not done um, telling yet. Maybe Nate, are they going to clone Baby uh, Baby Yoda? Um, Camino? 
I don't think so. I think the only reason they're trying to get this is for Palpatine. And so I really don't know where it could go. Uh, either this blood is going to be used for the shell we saw in Rise of Skywalker. That's degrading it by that point. Or it's going to be used for a couple of the failed ones. Snoke. And Snoke and, and uh, Ray's, Ray's daddy. Yeah. Um, and all that stuff. I don't think Dr. Pershing is going to have anything to do with this because you can tell that if Cara Dune knows what she's he, doing, she, he's been taken back to the New Republic. Yeah, I think they could turn him, though. I think that um, uh, that he's a scientist. He's a scientist that's been employed by the Empire, he and he knows what's Grogu. going on. He didn't want to hurt Grogu. He saw what the Imperial uh, uh, pilot was willing to do to him just to to protect what was going on, which yeah. is a crazy sequence. And here's the other thing. There's two different times now in this season, one of them succeeded, one of them failed, where an Imperial was getting ready to be captured. And, you know, the, in, in, uh, the Bo-Katan episode chapter, was it chapter 13, 12, uh, chapter 11, chapter 11, um, that, that commander or that captain or whatever killed himself mm. with, with, you know, like the, the, the cyanide pill, the, cyanide, in Star Wars. the electric cyanide pill. And this started to happen with Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon has information that he doesn't want to get out. And that's why Cardoon wanted him. And, and that's why Cardoon stopped him from doing it. Dr. Pershing has the same information. He knows probably more than Moff Gideon. And I don't think he's got a whole lot of loyalty right now. I mean, he was so easily... Like, like, he's like he just yeah, gave he's away... Like, he's like, here's how the Moff dark Gideon is. Were. This is where the dark... Exactly. I think that he... Actually, I think he's... I tweeted out to him earlier in the season and he liked this tweet so it's like our claim to fame right now especially with i mean we had it with john boyega and it did and it was it was right <laughs> we said before rise of skywalker that john boyega was going to be a jedi and we made an argument for it and he liked that tweet well we tweeted out this year this season that dr pershing is the rosetta stone of the sequel trilogy and he liked that tweet i think we're going to see some more about him in season three um on it um this might not take a long time to talk about, but will we ever see Luke Skywalker in, in live action again? Let's, let's, let's go with you first, BB Nate. Maybe. Um, do I think we see him for a long time? No, because we could tell they didn't have the de-aging tech down to a science quite yet. And I think that that was on purpose. They didn't show him for very long and they didn't work on it for very long because they didn't expect to use it very much. Um, I think we might see him again sometime later in the future, bring him back Grogu or in like a little bit of a, Hi, here's your kid back. Just Bye. a real small sequence. Yes. Um, but I don't think we'll see anything more that like a series. I, I don't think we could do that. What'd you think about, um, the technology behind the, the Luke Skywalker appearance, the, the CGI? What, what was your thoughts on that, Savi? Could be better, could be worse. Okay. Kind of yeah. like what we've seen with most of the de-aging we've yeah. seen. I mean, you can tell it's not the, uh, the person, but I mean, that's impossible. Obviously. It's frustrating to me because we saw, fantastic de-aging work in Captain Marvel with Samuel L. Jackson. Nick Fury played young Nick Fury. I don't think they de-aged, they de-aged him. him. They I thought de-a- that it was just makeup. It was him doing it, but they de-aged him. I thought it was just ha- hair makeup. No, no. Hmm. They de-aged him in it. And gave him an eye. This one, they had a different actor and they they created the de-aging like they've done with some other stuff. Like um, Tarkin. Like Tarkin and such. And then Mark Hamill voiced it, which was awesome, uh, by the way, to hear Mark Hamill voice. I love yeah. what he tweeted oh, out. Oh, yeah. I would day. be mad if they used someone else's voice. Like, exactly. There's no reason for that. Yeah. It was fun to hear it, to see. I mean, he is a voice actor. Did so. you watch anything on TV lately? Anything good on TV lately? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he talked about. Um, Samuel the Hutt, um, Luke Skywalker uh, is such a critical character he is star wars for so many fans do you think this hurts the franchise or helps the franchise by bringing him back in in these little little moments i think i don't think it really makes much of a difference if you leave him in these small moments i don't think they're going to bring him in or yeah they're going to bring him into anything major um anytime soon i think that They've got to leave it as these little things just because they frankly don't have the technology right now. Also, they don't want to keep fleshing out that story too much at the moment. They, again, like Nathan said, I think fans are starting to kind of get away from the Skywalker saga a bit. Not saying that there aren't people who want more Luke. You know, Steel Saunders is one of them. Um, but I think that they're going to leave him in these small moments. It'll be great for the fans. It helps. It, it helped drive the story forward in a good way. Um, but I think that's going to basically be his role. 
I think that putting Luke Skywalker in these little moments is a great way to kind of help usher the Skywalker saga into this new area of how Star Wars is going to be. Kind of just like letting everybody down soft from the Skywalker saga. My favorite part, though, about Luke Skywalker's appearance was the fact that he walks onto this Imperial cruiser bridge, <laughs> right? He finally gets in there. He, he like, he lands his X wing and then there's all these dark troopers and he's like, all right. <laughs> and he starts mowing them all down and he has some fun and it's Rogue One, but light side version, um, with it. And I cannot wait. I'm almost certain Adam Lance Garcia is going to create that side to side video. He did this before with Empire Strikes Back and The Last Jedi of different sequences. I'm sure you're going to see Dark Vader, Dark, Dark. Did I just do a Dark Vader? <laughs> I just did a Darth ah. Vader, Darth Vader Cancel. in Rogue One and Luke Skywalker in the Mandalorian side by side going down that hallway, mowing down uh, their enemies and such. Um, but then he gets on the destroyer or the cruiser's bridge. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple Mandalorians. There's a shock trooper. There's like three Mandalorians. There's a shock trooper. There's, there's a bone, bounty hunter there's or an a, assassin. An assassin in Fennec. There's a, a moth a freaking moth on the ground. Cosplaying as his dad. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't acknowledge any of it. No. Nope. He's just like, I'm He's like, like that's the kid. kid. I'm here for the baby. That's See all. Ya. <laughs> I'm out of here. He's going to come with me. Let's go. And he just leaves them all. And it's just kind of like, I'm. I felt a little bit like everybody on the bridge going, what? <laughs> that's, that's Luke Skywalker. <laughs> And he just walked out the door. What do we do with this thing? He's like, this is not my business. I don't want nothing to do with this. <laughs> All right. Last question is, and I'm going to let you go first, Savvy. Is Grogu really gone? I think for the time being, probably. But there is that, you know, that little line where um, Mando promises him that he will see him again. So that makes me wonder when we will see him again. Will we see it? Will we just get like a little scrapbook picture, <laughs> you know, in the corner of a screen sometime or something like that? They're going to hologram each other once yeah, in a while for birthdays know, and Christmas or life time. day for birthdays and life day. So Right. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not going to get my hopes up about seeing him again anytime soon so that then it'll be a nice surprise if I okay. do see him. That's good. Sam, uh, be Nate. Let's go with you. What do you think? We're going to see Grogu again? Um, most certainly. I mean, it's too much of a cash grab to just get rid of him. <laughs> just let, let him go straight to the money. That's the BB-9. Um, so. I don't... I mean, if they do, the more power to them because they got rid of something that was great for them. Hmm. And so... It that takes guts. They can it takes guts go. that they're going to do this next... I mean, they're going to go a period of time without... Grogu. Grogu takes significant confidence. That was kind of carrying the series. And you have to think, without Baby Yoda, this series would have been dark. So they have to find other ways to put in mm. comedic moments without Grogu being cute. That's interesting. So <laughs> Samuel Hutt, you know, we've we we experienced a very lighthearted season. I mean, it had its moments, but lighthearted season one of Star Wars Rebels. And then it started to get darker in season two to where season three and season four got really dark at times. Really it, it matured yes. along with uh, with its viewers. Do you mm -hmm. feel like that's what we could be seeing with this? And does that mean that, that they had to get rid of Baby Yoda for a while? Yeah, I think that's logical. I think that um, episode, uh, the last episode before this one, with that didn't have any Baby Yoda, I think that was like a little bit of a primer. Um, just like to, this is going to happen in the future. Right, like get used to it. And honestly, I didn't even notice it until other people have started pointing it out. I was like, oh wait, Baby Yoda wasn't in that. Um, so I think they can pull it off. They pulled it off with that episode. It had a different feel for sure. But I think that they can pull it off. And I think this show will get darker and will f explore different themes. Could you imagine what it would be like, though, if in season three, Mando goes to Camino and he walks into this, you know, goes down these corridors. He's maybe battling and all this other stuff. And then he defeats his bat. His, he gets to his wherever he wants to go and he opens it up and there's all those cloning cylinders. And, and it's they're all full of like little baby Otis. Grogu's. That would be pretty nice. bizarre, wild, crazy. And then what does he do? Does he? he that, exactly. What is one of them, baby? Is one of them really Is one of them Grogu? really Grogu? What does he do with them? Yeah. Are they creating like an army of these force users? Force users. Does he somehow do out of the good of his heart Folks, to get I'm rid of them? I'm just letting you know right now, if you're a Legends fan, you're loving what I'm talking about <laughs> right now. So, all right. Um, well, let's, uh, there's so much more. We could talk about this for another hour probably, but uh, we need to close this episode up. So anything else you guys want to talk about? 
Well, wouldn't you know that StarWars.com is releasing a series of featurettes for the 40th anniversary of the Empire Strikes Back? Yeah, those are a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, they are. And they were probably going to release a bunch of this stuff at, at Celebration, but they didn't get it. And an Imperial officer's taunt on the Mandalorian season finale put a dark twist on the Death Star contractors discussion from Kevin Smith's clerks. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They're, they're, you know, the re- rebellion were terrorists. They kind of were. You know? And, uh, yeah, anyway, I don't want to go any further because I don't want to turn this into a political <laughs> thing. All right. Samuel, you got some sad news. Though, yeah, sure. a little bit of a somber note. But um, Jeremy Bullock, the original Boba Fett actor in uh, episode five and six, um, died at 75 earlier this week. You got to meet Jeremy a couple, yeah. uh, three years ago. Uh, my, his my backpack with his signature on it is in my room right now. Yeah, and you got the picture in our, in our mm-hmm. studio um, where I was all guys. awkward and like yeah, was I was standing like two feet away from him. You were so totally intent, right? Like intimidated and by, by the braces situation. and everything. Yeah, Jeremy Bullock was one of the sweetest men that you in Star Wars we've ever. I mean, met. I was in that line for two hours just because he took his time with every fan. You know, really making sure he made an impact with them. It was really cool. And he's completely opposite of Boba Fett. He's such a yeah. sweet kind. It's funny how the sweet people normally play villains. Yeah, that's her. That's really interesting. Well, that's been fun. Savannah, it's been awesome having you on these past yeah, few thank episodes. You. Uh, we'll have to do it again sometime. I think you're going to be coming down to uh, Orlando. You'll actually get to be in studio with us. Yes. Like instead of us bringing our gear to, to Alabama, Alabama, you'll be coming to uh, Orlando. Ooh. We maybe do some live stuff from uh, Galaxy's Edge. <gasps> We could do some like Ooh. video stuff, and Promise? you can you can, oh, uh, you can help us take some really cool some pictures because oh, you're really good. Oh at yeah, that. you know I'll be taking all the pictures. Right, that'll be fun. <laughs> she can yeah. finally experience Ogas. Oh, oh yeah, yes. we get to Ogas Katina. Yes, very excited. Yeah, I can get like new like headshots of all of you. There we go. Yes. All right, we'll For go to free. yeah. We got, I got good ideas, and so, but she's gonna have better. So yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, make sure you guys check out our uh, our. We've got a uh, um a. A flow link, uh, flow.page. Tatooine or slash Tatooine Sons, S O N S. It's got all of our stuff about our shirts and subscribing to our show and all that other fun stuff. Um, what's it? What, what did I do something? So, <laughs> no, yeah, okay, no. Right. I'm feeling old at this point. Um, and we want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. Yeah, uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for listening to the show as well. And Spend, spend time with your family. Happy Boxing Day. Happy Boxing Day. For Dominic Jones and our friends up in Canada. Yeah. 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 Happy Boxing <laughs> Day. Yeah, that's cool. I, I'm trying to remember where that comes from. but anyway. I remember looking it up and it made sense when I looked it up, but, but you know, I, I, I just can't. What do you got, what do you got planned for for, for uh, Christmas Day, Miss Savannah? Um, well, all my family will come to my house and we'll have our, our family Christmas time. We'll have dinner together, all that fun stuff. That's cool. And going. I think we're probably going to go watch the new Wonder Woman. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's very exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll probably watch it sometime that weekend if we don't watch it on HBO Max. We'll watch it in the no, I will not Maybe anything. we can see it a day early. Just joking. We'll be tied up Christmas Eve. Yeah. No, we've stuff. got a busy Christmas Eve. So yes. thank you guys so much. Anything else you guys want to say? May the force be with you. 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 Always. This party's over. I like that monkey. Don't get technical with me.